What's up, guys? Uh, we got a new GoPro. Um, and we're about to swap some motors around. Specifically, get the one out of this one, get some parts off it, so that we can then get this motor bolted into that car so I can sell that car. So, uh, be back in a moment. Let me just get this car jacked up off the ground and get it ready. All right, so once you got it jacked up, I like to get it up pretty high. So then you get the motor out from the bottom. The motor and transmission together will slide out the bottom. So you definitely need an engine hoist. But um, first you want to start off by doing the obvious stuff. There's no radiator in here, but get the radiator drained. You pull it out so you don't risk damaging it. Um, and just start disconnecting stuff. You know, you've got your got reverse light plug. You've got your power going to your starter. Um, let's go and get that taken off. It's usually supposed to be a 13 mil. It's, or the rust will just take care of it for you. Rust and corrosion. I could have saved that starter, I guess, if I had cl actually cleaned up these threads. But I'm not going to rely on that starter, even if it's good. I'm literally just going to throw it off to the side. Because if it still works now, I wouldn't trust it to work a month of, after even a week of use. I would expect it to die. So, no sense in crying over that one your trigger wire for the starter. Next up you've got a couple of wires. You've got oil pressure, at least your dummy light, because up here is the sender, so this will tell you the actual oil pressure, whereas this is just your dummy light. Um, this right here will be your oil temperature, or vice versa. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the dummy light little red light on the dash that lights up and this is temperature if I'm wrong sorry whatever up here you've got coolant coolant temperature that's what I'm gonna do just to make my life easier because I don't know what else is going on with this car I'm going to coil these three wires up and kind of just loop them together so they stay grouped together so I don't forget it can be a little overwhelming it's a lot easier to take stuff apart than it is to put it back together anybody can part a car out but i mean not to say that these are complicated but there's some ghetto shit going on here is that broke anyways that's good it's got oil pressure there that this would be going to your distributor, which is not plugged in, but you get three, three wire rectangle or sometimes oval. Below the oil pressure sender is a ground wire. It takes this little 10 millimeter. On the alternator here, we've got a 13 mil. This is some ghetto shit they got going on here. So this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be plugged right into the alternator. Obviously not the case here. They got some real ghetto shit going on with this. I'm not going to trust this alternator. Same thing as the starter. All right, take that right to the scrapyard. Yeah, it's all crusty when you spin it. So that's everything on the left side in terms of wires. Everything's disconnected there. Take the starter off. With this, this starter goes through a bracket, and that bracket goes to a rubber mount. Call it engine mount. It doesn't really bolt to the chassis. It just has a rubber, like, ball, fist-looking thing that just sits inside this cup on the body. So, you take these two bolts out on the starter on the top and the bottom, um, and that all comes out. So, the starter bolts, again, are an 8 millimeter. Allen head 
you can remove this starter and the bot the two bolts on the starter and this front engine mount without the hoist it doesn't there's not much pressure on it so you go do all that before you get the engine hoist hooked up so then underneath again this eight millimeter allen head bolt that's on there pretty good ah. This nut's supposed to be welded onto that engine mount bracket. And you'll see this is all turning freely. Like I said, there's not a lot of weight on this front engine mount. And the same goes for this back engine mount. Uh, we'll get a better view of that in a bit. Just like that, starter comes out. Junk. And then this engine mount pops out. See, like I said, it's just a rubber foot that sits inside this cup. That's that sweet Eurosport brace that got mangled. I wonder what the hell that's about. But I will be putting a new one on here because this car is rusty and definitely needs the support. Maybe I'll just use this one on here because uh, it seems to be already be bent to the shape of the car. All right, that's it under there for now. The clutch cable. There's just a little like retention clip. It comes out by hand. She's supposed to be a little more play in this clutch cable. But anyways, like I was trying to say, so that rubber went flying somewhere. But basically, you have a rubber bushing right there. This goes through the clutch. I mean, this goes through the transmission like that, and then through the arm, the clutch release arm on the transmission, and then through the rubber bushing through there, and then this clip is what holds it all together. So it just slides on like that. There's a little, there's a little indent there, and that's that. So really as when, when everything's not all rusted and crusty you pull up on that clutch release arm and get a little bit of play in there and this all should just slip out like that pretty easy simple design i wouldn't say these clips go bad but the rubber wears out or the clutch cable snaps and then that clip will go flying so it doesn't hurt to drill some holes in these and put a piece of safety wire. Always check for your engine ground straps and whatnot. This isn't even supposed to be like this. Um, it's supposed to be a strap that goes from the body and the battery into a bolt that goes on this transmission mount. So, I don't know what kind of hodgepodge homemade crap this is, but this isn't how it's supposed to be. So from what I was told, this engine's trash. So, I'm just gonna take their word on it. Maybe I'll pull the head off, keep the head as a spare. Transmission, however, um, maybe we'll keep that for a rainy day. All right, so we got all our wires disconnected on the driver's side too. Uh, well, most of them, just double check. Always double and triple check because your engine hoist will not care about what you left it ghetto shit going on with this car they have more stuff grounded here that I don't think is supposed to be grounded here this car is a prime example of why I personally like carburetors um, the other alternative is go diesel mechanical diesel but me personally trying to sort through all this wiring after somebody hacked whoever knows how much stuff is not worth it. You know, there's all this CIS stuff that I would not trust to work again or work properly. So, uh, me personally, this car just needs a carburetor or carburetors or a diesel swap. But you wanna go around and disconnect all your wires first. Yeah, see they got another ground back here for something. It's probably better to do this before you jack the car up. It's not reaching over it. And so you can actually see what's going on. 
put stuff in the back, especially if you've got a bunch of CIS stuff. Um, because you do not want to go breaking vacuum lines and wires and stuff. With CIS, there's a whole bunch of vacuum lines running all over the place. You have to be careful with those, especially if they're old and brittle. I mean, you could just put in new vacuum lines, but if you're trying to salvage stuff, you definitely need to be careful with that. This side, all those wires are disconnected. You go ahead and pop that. We got the heater core line. And I pointed out this hard line before that goes into the bottom of the water pump, comes up. This tees off and goes into the coolant bottle, which would be sitting right here. You'll have another line going to the top of the coolant bubble. This is on the late Westy cars. Early cars don't have a reservoir. They just have a radiator with a cap on the radiator. You fill it through the radiator. So anyways, you have the hard line that goes into the bottom of the water pump down here. Comes up, goes to the coolant reservoir, yada, yada, yada. And then it goes into the firewall here. Before it goes into the firewall, you've got your blend lever thing, whatever you want to call it, for the heat. This cable goes to your heater controls, and this controls hot and cold flow. I really shouldn't be saving these coolant lines due to the age, but whatever. It's good to have them as spares. This car's not going to have heat, so all of this stuff's going to get ripped out. Like I said, good to have as spares. Same thing uh, up over here. So you got, like I was saying, you've got the hard line goes into the heater core up top and then just below that is another line that comes out and goes into the head, the cylinder head. Very important that you connect, disconnect them both. So I'm just gonna cut this because I don't like how old and hard this is up there. These lines are still readily available too. So they have the wrong hard line on this car. So they got something funky going on with the coolant being looped back. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. So that's that. Like that over here. Don't do that to your car. This is charcoal canister, emissions nonsense, but I don't need that. For those of you who are already kind of losing track, um, get yourself a roll of masking tape and label stuff as you take it off. Take pictures before. This is a poor example of a car to show you how to do this on, because again, half the CIS stuff is missing. You'll have your air box over here the fuel distributor and all the lines coming off it so this isn't the best car to show you a step-by-step -step on tag everything take pictures before you dig into it you make a nice clear and clean space on a workbench or or a fold-out table mine isn't organized but get yourself a nice fold-out table so everything you actually take off the car you can set down ziploc bags are a huge help i'm not really labeling anything because i know what the important stuff is Half of that stuff's getting cut out and ripped out because because you don't need it for carburetors. Take your time when doing this if it's your first time. So we got all the, most of the wires off up here. Still got to check back there for who knows what they got going on back there. Uh, coolant lines are all disconnected or cut. Um, now we got the shift linkage back here. Rust. Gotta love rust. This is supposed to be a clip that pops right out nice and easy. Um, considering all the rust is not the case anymore. So there's just supposed to be a little little clip. It's supposed to be a little clip that goes through there and it keeps that in place. It's down on the bottom, you've got these little plastic clips get something in there usually they'll just pry off with your finger too with your fingernail so those are easy and it's a little ball and socket type setup you can just usually can pry this open with your fingernails if not a screwdriver works easy enough 
Now, you still want to go underneath the car. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, this motor's junk. Because that is coolant coming out of... Now, what that could mean is a bad head gasket or a crack in the block. I'm going to go with the bad head gasket. And somebody prob then somebody probably just kept running it until it overheated. Or who knows what. Either way, that's not a good sign. Okay, let's check back here for anything funky. What a piece of shit this car is. The throttle cable. Don't forget to disconnect that. So that's supposed to sit up here. So in short, disconnect all your lines, your hoses, your wires, all your coolant lines. Make sure the motor's totally disconnected from the rest of the car in that sense. Get yourself down to just these engine mounts. Uh, we still gotta go in the back underneath. And all right, so normally you would disconnect the headers the right way and unbolt them from the head but these things are beat i don't care to save them i bet you i can poke right through that with a screwdriver um so i'm just gonna cut these off uh, but otherwise normally you would disconnect your header you could disconnect it from the cat back and the head and remove it out altogether. give yourself some more room to move the motor around um but like i said i'm just gonna cut these off these are junk Get them out of my way. Um, and the next up, next to the passenger side axle, this is where that would go in and bolt up. Just behind that, next to it, you've got these three bolts. One, two, and then three right up there. You wanna take those off. These are for the rear transmission mount. So you've got this bracket with the three bolts, and you've got your rubber mount. And then there's one big bolt there. I believe that's a 19. Yeah, it's a 19. And then you've got two 15s, I believe, back here that bolt into the body. So I take out all five of those bolts, all six of them, the three up here and the three down here, because uh, this can get in your way. You don't need to take it out, but it's it's three extra bolts. You know, it's two extra bolts. I take it all out together. As you see, that passenger side axle is already out. Uh, this driver's side, I'm going to take these six bolts out, triple square. You definitely need to take the header out. You're going to want to take this mount out. And technically, you can leave the axles in, both axles. You can bungee them up out of the way. The benefit to this is you do not mess with your alignment. You don't have to remove your strut bolts um, or your ball joint bolts. But it could still be a pain when it comes to, re to reinstalling. So my advice is take the axle out altogether. Um... <laughs> get the car realigned after or just learn how to align it yourself at home because I've if I had to pay for alignments I'd be almost into them for what I have into these cars altogether All right, so just about got this axle disconnected Can't cut out the stupid exhaust already um, again these axles you can take bungee straps for each one and bungee this part up out of the way now we're going to disconnect this rear transmission mount. This car had some cool stuff on it. I thought that was a homemade weighted shifter, but I see a Euro Sport sticker on it. So at some point somebody tried to care about this car, but oof. They didn't really follow through with it. I'm excited for this. I'm finally getting a solid idea of how much rust is on this thing. It's not great. But it's not bad either. But all three of these were just 17s. These two on the body, on the back here, are 17s as well. You know, really the most important thing is just taking your time and looking around every angle on every side of the motor. Make sure there's nothing still connected. Once you get this thing hanging from the engine hoist, where you don't you don't want to have to go 
climbing underneath the car, disconnecting stuff once it's hanging. The last thing you want to do is, is find out you forgot to unbolt or unhook something while you've got the engine hanging from the engine hoist. Because one, that's dangerous, and two, it's just a pain. What I like to do for a few reasons is leave this moving blanket underneath the motor get the engine hoist because then you can drag the motor out by this and you're also not going to be draining you're not going to be leaking stuff all over your driveway use a moving blanket makes it more comfortable for you to work on and it gives you a place to drop the motor onto and drag it out so now we're going to get this engine hoist out and hooked up front mounts disconnected rear mounts disconnected so as you can see the only thing holding the motor in right now are the two side engine mounts and it moves fine, you know, it's safe, it's in there. It's not gonna fall out, it shouldn't fall out. But uh, you get all that stuff done, then you get your engine hoist hooked up. So these are nice to have. Get them at Harbor Freight, same with the engine hoist. Um, allows you to move the motor back and forth and also gives you a solid place, solid way to connect the motor. Otherwise, seat belts work. Tie up the seat belts like a rope. They work really well, they're really strong. But uh, this is the this is the way to work like a gentleman. Uh, on the back of the block here, passenger side, there's a big eye hole thing. Make sure you get some good grade eight bolts. Don't use no cheap Chineseium, otherwise you'll have a bad day. These motors aren't very heavy, but Chineseium isn't very good. It is I will loosen this one transmission bolt. This one's on the front side. It's a 19 mil. I forget the thread and pitch, but uh, take you just take it out and bring it with you to the hardware store. Like I said, I forget the thread and pitch. You can take it out, bring it with you to the hardware store, and uh, match it up and get yourself a longer one. If you're in a pinch, I guess you could use this. This way you can get plenty of threads latched on. Chain this up with. Now I've done it a handful of times like this through these two holes that I just showed you. Um, obviously do this at your own risk, but this hasn't failed me yet. Like I said, I really like using this moving blanket. Helps keep stuff off the ground and gives you something to pull the motor out a little easier with. With a second set of hands, it's not hard to pull the motor out, but I mean, if you've got a nice oil pan or, um, you know, you don't want to scratch your driveway up or whatever, it's an easy way to do it. Otherwise, you get a little dolly, put it underneath, you roll the motor out. Then you got to pick it up high, you got to pick the car up higher though. A little, you don't want to pull it up too much, but you want to get some, obviously, want to get some weight off those bolts. So you could pull them out easily. This driver's side is nice and easy to reach. We're gonna go loosen, at least break free this passenger side. Not necessarily remove it, but we do wanna break it free. Now this passenger side mount is easier to get from underneath. Definitely want to break this one free, maybe not remove it entirely while you're underneath the motor. Even if you've got the hoist on it, never trust or rely on that. Just like that, that one's out. While not necessary, I prefer to remove the arm of the transmission. I'll go and remove these two bolts. Okay. Doesn't seem like that's coming out. Normally I would take this arm off, but the at least this bolt's seized up pretty good. I don't feel like breaking something breaking my tool or knuckles. 
Okay, so we're gonna leave it on. Uh, but generally speaking, it does help to take it off. It does give you a little bit more room. So bungee that axle up out of the way. Same for the passenger side if you leave it in. Make your life easier. Let's go this down slow. Oh, this is called a leveler. A leveler allows you to work like a gentleman. With removal, doesn't help so much, but getting the motor in, this is a big help. See, what were we talking about? I forgot something. And speedo cable. Because I'm an idiot. Too busy talking. Given the condition of everything else on this car, I'm just going to cut it. I don't recommend doing that, obviously. But I don't, I'm not going to trust that speedo cable. And I don't feel like fighting that to get it off. But it is just a Phillips head. Um, use an impact screwdriver if you got one and it'll pop it right off. Since I forgot that, I'm gonna double check everything else is disconnected. Shift linkages, um, we're good to go. Let's try this again. If you do have a nice engine bay, I do recommend doing this with a second set of hands. There we go. And we're free. Right. So, motor's on the ground. Oh, take your grill out if you care about it. Now, because I don't care about this motor or car, I'm just gonna push this thing out on its back and drag it out. Get yourself a second set of hands. It's a motor you care about or a motor that's still good. And there you have it. That is how you remove a Mark I engine like a Neanderthal. So that about wraps it up. Um, sorry I didn't have a full CIS set up to show you, you know, a true start to finish uh, motor removal. Um, and a bit more detailed of a walkthrough with it, but I mean, it's, 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 it's really simple. This was really just supposed to give you an idea that it's not it's not like too hard of a job to remove the motor on one of these um, the in terms of like doing this on a car with a full CIS system intact um, it's really not much different just go be gentle with taking your stuff apart be mindful of what you take apart tag it label it take pictures and you'll be all right and just be mindful that when you go to put stuff back together if something looks iffy dry rotted cracked that might give you an issue because these cars and motors are real sensitive to vacuum leaks at least with cis i mean anything any any kind of motor is going to suffer from a vacuum leak but this should take you a couple hours you know half a day maybe six seven hours if it's your first time everything goes smooth all in all this takes me about an hour or two to have a motor out i know a couple of people who say they do it in an hour or less which yeah it can be done especially if you have all the power tools to do it um but it takes me about two hours, give or take. Take your time. Um, it's not too bad of a job. I've said it a bunch of times before. I'm not very experienced with making how-to videos. Um, I've only been doing this for a little over a year. The whole YouTube in general. So um, this is a little bit of a learning experience for me too. I'm trying to figure out how to document this the best. 
and most coherent way. Um, if I'm not happy with the way these come out, uh, I will film again on this car because we're going to be doing a diesel swap on it. I'm going to get rid of the gas motor so you guys will be able to see a true start to finish on a running driving car. Um, so, like I said, you know, it's still learning as I go with figuring out how to document all this and build a good database for you guys. So, you know, like I said, if I'm not if I'm not super satisfied with the way this comes out, I will film refilm it essentially and post that. But, you know, feel free to leave any criticism, any suggestions, any hate, any trolling. Do it up. Light me up, fam. All right, see you guys later.